So let's reflect on that England performance first then, Fiona. First look at them. First win on the opening day for them in five years. But I suppose you do have to take into account it was against Italy. Yeah, look, I think they're still trying to find their feet with new players in, um, new defence coach, you know. But Italy asked questions of them and Italy have shown that they had a good start at the Six Nations last year, a poor World Cup, but that they have talented players within their squad. And, you know, I don't think Ireland will take Italy lightly next week. And similarly enough, I don't think Ireland will take any team lightly in this competition. Um, but, yeah, they're definitely... England will grow as the tournament goes on and they will be better than that. But I just think that they not there yet in terms of how they're trying to play. It's a weird one. I have lots of friend, uh, English friends across the water and they were like, we need to evolve, we need to get better, we need to change our game plan. We can't play like we did during the Rugby World Cup and expect to get better during the Six Nations and try and win the championship. We need to evolve. And then everybody was like, OK, Owen Farrell's obviously not playing. Um, Marcus Smith's going to step in. And then all of a sudden he gets injured. George Ford comes in, he kicks 17 points today, five penalties, and it just feels like... Same Just rin yeah, rinse and repeat from, from the Rugby World Cup and are England evolving? I think a little bit just because of the, the new players that they've brought in, um, but it's the, it's the same tactics, the same uh, pragmatic game plan and it is tough to watch at times and you know, Italy got off to a really good start and another team would have went would on and, and won that game. So yeah, I think it's going to be a work in progress for Steve Borthwick and his men. With all respect to the other teams in the competition, Jerry, they're still now Ireland's biggest threat to that Grand Slam based on what we've seen over this weekend, you'd imagine. It's probably fair because you know that the, the, you know, the quality of players that England have there, it's whether they can get them together and make them a more cohesive unit uh, quick enough to, to challenge Ireland. But based on what we saw over this weekend, I would say Ireland are, are, are by far and away have, have looked the best side. Um, that's not to say you looked at England and how they ground their way through a World Cup, how they had a really poor run in performance wise into the World Cup. But then, you know, the, the narrative that they would be painting after that, that the World Cup was a really successful campaign for them. So, you know, they'll say, listen, Italy last year were very competitive in the Six Nations. This is the first game when teams are like everyone is full of hope. So Italy away is, is not is not going to be an easy game for England. So that, you know they'll still th feel that you know whilst they were probably disappointed to concede so many points, they were a good a good start for them. The winner between Ireland and France in the last two years, Fiona, has gone on to win a Grand Slam, and there's going to be that level of expectation now from Ireland that that's what they're to deliver. What about France? What sort of position are they in after this weekend? Yeah, look, they need to look at why there was no intensity, why they were lacklustre at home it, down in Marseille. Like, they just lacked everything in attack and defence. And, you know, they've a solid enough squad. Yes, they're missing DuPont, but you can't put that down to one player. They went down to 14 at one stage. But there was times in the match that there was 15 v 15 and 14 v 14, and Ireland were far superior. Like, I think last year at the start of the Six Nations, they were poor as well and in the first game against Italy. Uh, I think they will be better the next time out. But... I just don't know if there's enough in them to turn it around fully, to get back to playing the way that we saw them playing at times last year. And they have a tricky one against Scotland as well. That's not an easy one to get back on the horse either, Stephen. No, definitely not. You know, they, they, need to, they need to really get into this tournament and, and start firing. But well, you know, we've seen that not one week, 40 minutes of rugby yeah. can, can change things. Like we were just talking about how Wales now have... Um, got their tournament going in the second half of their match. So, you know, next week is just going to throw up a lot, a, a lot more um, things that we're going to be talking about and what players are out of form and what coaches are under pressure and, and what team's going to move forward. But the only thing that has been in place across the weekend is how good Ireland were from minute one to minute 80. There wasn't one area of their game that you went, oh, geez, that looks a bit shaky. I'm not sure about that for next week. I'm not sure about that for next week. Where all the other teams, you would say, you know, you could pick their game apart a little bit. So that's what's given me the confidence that we can go on and hopefully do back-to-back -back Grand Slams. Yeah.